Hello and welcome to Just Hoops. The Washington Wizards offensively next season have an opportunity to be one of the best and most explosive in the NBA. Coach Wes Unseld is going into his third season as head coach of the Washington Wizards. They have a different looking roster without the likes of Bradley Beal, Kristaps Porzingis, and they're coming into the season with new life and energy in terms of a youthful roster. To go to last season to start though, they weren't great offensively by any stretch. The things that stood out to me were the effective field goal percentage being 55% and the true shooting being 58.5%. They have a lot of areas to improve though overall. But now let's dive into the film from last season and see what Coach Wes Unsell Jr. can bring with him to the upcoming season. So to start, we got to talk about their offensive flow. Coach Wes Unsell Jr. has done a terrific job at implementing a four round one offensive system where there's a lot of flow, a lot of pace, a lot of ball movement, player movement that puts a lot of guys in spots to be successful. First things first, when it comes to the spacing, four round one, as simple as it can be, you got four guys on the perimeter, typically slots and corners, and then they just move the ball, play off of each other. But as we go through these clips, you can see the goals of the offense. Multiple paint touches is a necessity when they get into their offensive flow, actions break down. They want to touch paint multiple times. Whether that means through cuts or by ball touching paint, it's just a way for them to produce good offense and also initiate cutting actions, initiate actions off the ball, and just constantly put the defense in spots to shrink and expand and yo-yo around creating offensive advantages. You can see in these clips though that every time down the floor when the initial action breaks down, they really are hunting paint and they are intentional about the way that they go about these paint touches. Besides that, they do a terrific job at cutting, moving off the ball, and just putting their guys in spots to be successful. Whether that means Daniel Gafford being on the porch, diving to the rim, being one of the best lob threats in the NBA. Whether that means DeLon Wright, who's one of the best passers in the NBA and playmakers, getting downhill, finding his teammates. Corey Kispert moving around, finding shots for himself and his teammates. Or Denny Avia, who's one of the most versatile wings in basketball and has a lot of room to improve. And then you can talk about the stars in Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole going into the next season where they'll be able to have the ball in their hands and also be put in a lot of situations off the ball where they can get paint, spray it out, relocate, and go make a play happen. To talk about the cutting a little bit more, they have some automatics within the half court. So there's an automatic 45 cut on a reversal through the top or a mid touch in five out situations. And there's also 45 or middle cuts on three man spacing when the ball is attacking from the strong side, the weak side guys automatically know to dive, cut, or even screen down for a corner man or the top guy in that three-man spacing. And lastly, they give a lot of freedom off the ball in terms of feel, knowing where the openings are, finding and identifying cracks in the defense, and just cutting to those areas on the floor to allow plays to be made. Whether that means one guy cutting, two guys cutting, as we've been talking about throughout this entire portion of the video, paint touches are crucial and a huge part of their success off offensively, producing high quality looks from both beyond the arc and at the rim. Next, to go outside of their flow offense, we have to talk about three-man actions. Wes Unsell Jr. has a variety of actions with three guys in them, with the ball or without the ball, just to distort defenses, create different advantages, and put guys in spots to be successful. The thing with these actions as we go through, you can see the variety of veers, you can see splits off the ball, playing off of a pin, having three guys on one side of the floor playing off of each other, uh, flare ball screens, uh, high rams, just different situations and different actions in general that put a lot of guys in different spots, put the defense in tough situations to recover or make plays happen. But at the end of the day, going into next season, imagine having an action with Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, Daniel Gafford all together on a side of the floor, one of them popping, one of them and allowing Daniel Gafford to dive, allowing Jordan Poole to have the ball in his hands, and also creating an opportunity for Kuzma to play with a closeout. Just having such a wide variety of skill sets and guys with size they could go out and make a play with the ball in their hands. I think Daniel Gafford is one of the best diver, roller, lob threats in the NBA. Along with that, Kyle Kuzma is highly skilled and versatile. Jordan Poole, highly skilled and talented scorer that has an opportunity to take a jump as a playmaker. Tyus Jones is one of the best point guards in basketball, and he has an opportunity in Washington to be a starting guard and take that role on with big time 
authority. Corey Kispert's an elite shooter. Denny Advia is uniquely skilled with his size and versatility. So they have a lot of different things that they can go to, play around with, and just create different advantages for these guys to be as successful as possible. Going into these though a little bit more, you can see that they use a lot of Spain action for shooters, whether that's Jordan Poole or Corey Kispert next season. You can also see the zooms, the Chicago's, those types of actions on the ball. You can see that the mid veer is a big time action that they like going to. They have a pitch and catch package where they put different guys in pitch and catch situations and then allow them to either run off of a screen or allow the new the ball to get into an action. Just different things. They do a lot out of pistol in terms of having different guys move to different spots. But overall, the gist is just to distort defense, create advantages, and just allow guys to flow into their four out one in with a lot of action, a lot of movement, and create good spacing and just put defenses in such weird situations so consistently i think last year if they were healthy they would have been a lot better offensively this offense itself is really tough to guard and puts defenses in spots like we've been saying and you can see throughout these clips at not having advantages but if you're able to create continuity know where guys are going to be know where they're flowing and know where their strong suits are you're able to put these actions at a much higher level you're able to know on the right side of the floor Corey likes getting to his left you know on the left side of the floor denny likes trying to get downhill to his right and then play behind just putting detailed oriented things within these three-man actions just to allow the best possible result every time could produce high quality offense and make the wizards one of the best offenses in the nba this upcoming season And the last thing we're going to talk about is Jordan Poole and his potential fit with the Washington Wizards next season. To do so, we got to look at Bradley Beal and where he got his field goal attempts. First things first, Bradley Beal was one of the most elite isolation scorers in the NBA throughout his career and including last season. I think Jordan Poole will have these opportunities and hopefully he's able to capitalize at nearly the same efficiency that Bradley Beal was able to. But the thing that made Bradley Beal so good and so hard to guard was his movement off the ball. I think Jordan Poole will easily be able to fit into these situations and play that same role for the Wizards this upcoming season, moving off the ball, being in staggers, playing off of splits, constantly moving throughout a possession. There's times where he had the initial action broken off. He'd flow through, through to the other side of the floor, come off a pin down, not be able to get it run into a get just do different things throughout an entirety of a possession and consistently work when it comes to the ability that jordan Poole has at scoring off the ball he's a big time shooter he did move really well off the ball for the golden state warriors i think he'll easily be able to do this for the wizards and i think that with the personnel the wizards have they have a ton of big versatile players that could play a multitude of positions and putting Jordan Poole in at the one or two and being able to run off screens from these guys could definitely create a, a lot of advantages that he's seen already throughout his career with the Warriors. Going into next season, Jordan Poole really has an opportunity to be a big time individual scorer, but the way that he does this is going to have to be through his teammates, trusting them with his movement off the ball, trusting that they'll find him and get the ball to him, and just having faith in the system that it'll get him the best shots time and time again. You saw Bradley Beal be able to do it, so I think Jordan Poole will easily be able to fit into the same role and be just as successful as Bradley Beal has been over the last two seasons with the Wizards under Coach Unseld. The Washington Wizards have a chance to be one of the most potent and fun offensive teams in the NBA next season with their new look rostered. I hope that this video shed some light on what they did last season that they can carry forward this season and create success in DC. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something about offense at the highest levels. For more content like this, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll catch you in the next one.